Hi everyone, this is Stefano Pando from Astro Vega. In this video, we will learn an easy way to process an image of Jupiter with programs Photoshop and Topaz. I will show you from beginning to end how I made this image of Jupiter, from that image file to this one. It will be an easy tutorial. First, let's start with the different optical hardware that I used. As for the telescope, I used a Skywatcher Maxutov Cassegrain telescope, diameter of 180 millimeters. It has a focal length of 2,700 millimeters, giving it a focal ratio of 15. Plus, I added a 2 times Bardo at the exit point, which adds twice the amount of focal length, now having a ratio of 30. Then, to capture Jupiter in a video, I used a planetary camera the ZWO ASI 462 color camera. This camera has a very fast frame rate per second and it's also sensitive to infrared light, which is great for planetary and lunar imaging. Last but not least, I also used an ADC filter on the optical chain. It works as an atmospheric dispersion corrector. By adjusting it, it will enhance the details on the surface of the planet as it reduces the amount of dispersion that occurs when light passes through our planet's thick atmosphere. That said, let's go right ahead and see what capturing a video of Jupiter looks like in SharpCap application. The SharpCap application is the one I prefer to use. Let's get into it. We want to capture a 2 minute video of Jupiter because its days are short. Past two minutes, you begin to see fuzziness on the details of the surface as they gradually change position as Jupiter rotates depending on your optics, left to right or opposite. Let's look at how to set up your controls in SharpCap for capturing Jupiter with the best results. Video settings should be set to .sir files and color space to RAW 8. First. Let's decrease the camera's resolution size to 816 by 822 pixels, being slightly above Jupiter's disk size. Why? An image of a planet doesn't require a starry background, not like astrophotography, where behind the object you'll have also the stars as equal importance. A matter of fact, even in history, like Lowell's observatory in the early 20th century, they never showed stars in the background of their planetary images. The other important reason about decreasing the sensor size is that it uses less pixels to have more frames per second. Next, the shutter time of the camera is set to 21.1 milliseconds and the gain to 301. This may vary depending the seeing and atmospheric conditions. Also check out your red and blue levels in the image control area. Try to adjust these for balancing your colors, RGB, and the peak of your color levels should be around 90% in the histogram, which you should always have it open to keep an eye on it. Because of a wobbly atmosphere, on average seeing conditions, you will want to get rid of at least three quarters of the frames, because most of them are blurry. This is why we need as much frames as possible for each video capture. And now, once you have chosen your best video of Jupiter, it's time to stack the frames of the video in AutoStackert application, which will produce a final image file of my choice, a TIFF file. Why a TIFF file? because it works well with Photoshop. Now let me show you how it's done. Here I got AutoStackert open. Then I go upload my video.surf file. Choose Planet Not Surface. Laplace is activated. Noise Robust to 6. Set the stack percentage to 35% keeping 35% of the 5,411 total frames, which probably is too generous in this case. Since we only have 5,411 frames for this video, I prefer keeping more frames than less. 
Put normalize stack to 85% and RGB aligned. Then press analyze and wait for the estimated results. Now the estimation done, you can see in the quality chart that we haven't got more than 30% of frames that pass the 50% quality range. You can go back and adjust your frames percentage to improve this. And now let's proceed to stack on the secondary window by placing the app grid with 200 big size pixels in order not to create weird stacking artifacts. Let's begin to stack by pressing the stack button. This might take a little while, so I will fast forward it for you. Once the stack is complete, you can open the output directory and go to your file. Now let's open the file with Photoshop. You can use any basic Photoshop. You don't need to purchase any extra plugins to do what we're gonna do. All through the process, I will use Photoshop and Topaz Denoise AI application, which serves as an add-on to Photoshop. You can do this without Topaz if you use the despeckle and reduce noise filters in Photoshop. Okay, now, first thing to do is to change the image resolution from 72 to 300 dpi. That gives us a bigger canvas to work with. And then, let's start sharpening the image with the unsharp mask filter a couple of times in low percentage with the pixel size to around 19 and 21. I prefer this method than sharpening only once or twice in a very high percentage. Doing it many times this way, I find I get cleaner results at the end. You can begin to see details coming out of Jupiter a little bit. We are seeing the cloud formation slowly revealing itself. Let's try another pixel size to vary the sharpness size. How about like that? Like this, it will be fine. And now, let's use the saturation filter to enhance the colors and warmness of the image. Click a couple of times the preview button so that you can compare. I don't want to saturate the image too much. Now comparing both. Like this it will be fine. Let's sharpen again. Notice how the details on the surface are coming out clearer and clearer. And now, let's adjust manually the color balance. I want to get rid of a bit of that reddish yellowish hue in my image. Then we continue the sharpening process until we get to an exaggeration and see the noise in the image.
The surface features on Jupiter are popping out. It's so nice. Stop this step when you're beginning to see too much noise accumulating from sharpening so much. Now we use Topaz Denoise AI, which will soften the image and get rid of some of the noise. Set the controls in Topaz to Low Light Remove Noise to High near 90% No Sharpening Restore Original Details and Low Color Noise Reductions to Low Gains Then press Apply to begin the process And of course you can do the preview first But I will fast forward keeping this video short Ok now Topaz is done it's also best if you save your work after Topaz has finished the process. Now, let's use a bit of Vibrance filter tool for enhancing our image. And let's compare before and after. Now, we will get rid of this stacking artifact on the left side of the edge of Jupiter's disk. In order to do so, first I will place the dotted circle select tool, place it over Jupiter and leave out the doubling artifact outside the circle. I'm trying carefully to keep a small distance away all around the disk in order to keep the blending aspect of it. You don't want to see a fine cut around the edge of the disk of Jupiter. Then make a copy of it, paste it onto a new layer which will be above the previous background layer. Then, I will extract the background color and fill it onto a new layer, which will serve as the background space. Let's use the Shadows and Highlights filter tool. This filter is important to give Jupiter more luminous gain and contrast, giving it more surface depth and brightness. And you don't want to overdo it, only subtle changes throughout your process. How about like that? Now, I'm going to downscale Jupiter for the sake of my composition and place it right in the center of my canvas. Last but not least, we will merge both layers to make one layer. And there you have it, before and after. What do you think? Leave a comment below. You can do it yourself now by watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the notification bell to be alerted for the next videos to come. Bye for now and clear skies to all.